Okay, my loves, let's look at the appendicular skeleton. Um, I'm going to try to go in the same order as your practicum study guide. Here are the clavicles. Okay, notice that one end is rather blunt, whereas the other end is rather fan-shaped. Okay, it's that fan-shaped end that sticks out toward the lateral aspect, right? Whereas the, the blunt ends are um, more medially situated, okay? The blunt end is called the sternal end, literally, <laughs> okay? And then that fan-shaped end is called the acromial end, acromial end. The acromial end is laterally situated, the sternal end is medially situated, okay? Let's see, I think scapula is next. And I, I asked you to especially know right versus left scapulae, right versus left humerus, right versus left hip bone, and right versus left femur. So I'll, I'll walk you through how to tell as well. Okay, so... Ignore those little bones right there. I just want them set up so I don't get them mixed up later. Okay, so the scapulae in the anterior view, so uh, anatomical view, they would be oriented like this, okay, where the the blade or the, I guess I shouldn't say blade actually, um, yeah, blade's fine, um, fan, okay, is medial, okay, whereas these protrusions are lateral, all right. This, all of these protrusions and also this surface, make up the very loosey goosey socket of the shoulder. Ball and socket. Okay. This surface here is the glenoid cavity. Glenoid cavity. This projection here, which is rather dorsal in orientation. That's a chromion. And this projection here is coracoid. Coracoid process. Okay. Whereas, if we turned this person over, now we're looking at their posterior. A chromion, a chromion. Coracoid process is resting on the table. Coracoid process, okay, glenoid cavity, glenoid cavity, okay. And then here, this is, not surprisingly, called the spine of the scapula. Why does that not surprise us? Because we learned supraspinatus versus infraspinatus already, those muscles. Okay, so personally, personally, I do best if I can wear the scapula, okay? I'm facing the same way as the camera, so imagine that, that you looking at this video is also me speaking to the video, all right? This would be my left scapula. My left scapula inside my body, if I'm facing this way. And this would be my right scapula. Often, students will reverse them. What do you think? Do your two humerus bones articulate right in the middle of your body? No. They're on your shoulders. Right? It's about as lateral as it gets. Okay, so be careful about that. Again, this is posterior view. This is anterior view. Scapulae. Okay, next...
let's look at the humerus. Okay, this is the anterior view. This is the posterior view. How can I tell so quickly? Well, in the anterior view, this very rounded bone marking is conspicuous. Whereas in the posterior view, it's, it's missing. I can't see it. Let's look at the other one. There's that rounded bone marking, so that must be anterior view. Where's the rounded bone marking? It's gone, so that must be posterior view. Okay. This bone marking, the rounded bone marking, articulates with the head of the, the radius, and it's called the capitulum, the capitulum. Whereas this bone marking, which kind of looks like the spool that your thread is on, or some people see a bow tie, and is conspicuous both, both anteriorly and posteriorly, that's the trochlea the trochlea, and that articulates with the trochlear notch of the ulna, okay? This projection here, and on the other one here, that's the medial epicondyle, okay? And that's another indicator of how to orient the two humerus bones, right? If I were to switch these out, I can tell that they're not oriented correctly because the medial epicondyle should be pointing medially, not laterally, right? Plus the head of the humerus. Well, I want that to fit in the socket. I don't want it to face away from the socket. So I'm gonna put these back to where I had them. Okay, medial epicondyles, All right? And then this little less prominent region, lateral lateral epicondyle okay and then can you kind of see how um as i'm traveling along the humerus suddenly there's like a twist a little bit of a twist i'm going straight and i twist see that i'm going straight and then i twist that's the deltoid tuberosity. Deltoid tuberosity. It's roughly, roughly halfway, just a little bit closer to the proximal end of the humerus. Okay. Now this here. That's the surgical neck of the humerus. Whereas this edge here that I'm trying to trace with my fingernail. That's the on anatomical neck of the humerus. And then this again is head, head of humerus, okay. This bump, this protrusion here, lesser tubercle, whereas this bump, which wraps all the way around to the back, and therefore is bigger, is the greater tubercle. Lesser tubercle, greater tubercle. Wraps all the way around to the back. So that's another difference between anterior and posterior. In the anterior view, I can see the capitulum. I can see the lesser tubercle. In the posterior view, I can't see the capitulum and I can't see the lesser tubercle. Okay. Let's see, I think, did I assign this or not? I don't remember. I'll double check. Yes, I did. Okay, right here. See that little dip? Dip. A little basin or a little depression. What's the word for depression? Fossa, fossa. This is called the olecranal fossa, or olecranon fossa, I don't care. Either one's fine. All right, I'm gonna put you down for a second. 
Just like to insult you for a second. That is not what I meant. <laughs> Whoa. Hold on, I better grab another Ola. Okay, so now I have the two ulna bones articulated with the humerus. All right, and Somewhere this came up already, but but just in case, here's my my mnemonic. This works for me. It really does. Okay, who's got a radius? This guy. In other words, your radius aligns with your thumb. Who's got an ulna? That guy. In other words, your ulna aligns with your pinky. Okay, and in anatomical position, your pinky would be medially situated, but your thumb would be laterally situated. Situated. <laughs> okay. Whereas, here are the radius bones. Okay. Oh, shoot. I just disturbed those little guys that I was trying not to. Shooter poops. Shooter poops. Okay, and they would align more or less like this. All right, so with that all in mind, here, very flat, looks like the head of a nail. That's the head of the radius. And what is it articulating with? The capitulum of the humerus, okay? This is also the, the uh, structure around which that annular ligament that fan belt that we talked about in chapter eight is wrapped to allow this to, to rotate, okay? Here, this bump, this bump is the radial tuberosity right here. See that? Okay. On the distal end, this protrusion here. Oh, actually, I'm not there yet. I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. We'll just do proximal end for now. Okay. Whereas, let's look at the matchy matchy ulna. Okay. Do you see a wrench? I kind of do. I see a wrench. Okay. And here, this depression that fits around the trochlear, or the trochlea, <laughs> sorry, is called the trochlear notch. The trochlear notch. Okay. Whereas this little depression here, that's the radial notch. And the head of the humerus articulates there as well. Um, this protrusion here, here, coronoid process, coronoid process. Whereas this again was coracoid process which sounds impossible. Like, how are you ever gonna keep that straight? It's actually not that bad. Scapula has a C in it. Ulna has an N in it. Coronoid. Coracoid. It's not that bad, we can do it. We can handle it. Let's see, what else did I wanna show you? Is there anything yet? Or else, I should say? I think just one other that's proximal. So here, this part of the wrench here is the olecranon, olecranon, okay? And, and the olecranon is posterior, by the way. There's anterior, there's posterior. Okay, let me advance the study guide here. Let's see, we did trochlear notch coronary process, olecranon head, 
Uh, this one's too obvious. Here, where I would strangle the radius if I was really angry with it, that's the neck. <laughs> but duh. <laughs> okay, now we can go to the distal end, okay? And this protrusion here is the radial styloid process. Okay, I'm gonna put that down and pick up the ulna. Okay, and on the distal end of the ulna, there's also a spiky spike. That's the ulnar styloid process. Okay, those should always be on the side. Well, I guess I shouldn't say side. Um, on the edge of your arm. In other words, if they were I'm running out of table. <laughs> Too many bones. If they were like this, that, there's something desperately wrong with this person. <laughs> okay. This should be toward the outer edges of your arm. Okay. Were there any other? I don't think so. I'm just going to double check. Uh, we could do that. So, I'm looking at the radius. Okay, here's the distal end of the radius. Whereas, here's the ulna, here's the distal end. So it's kind of weird that, that the ulna starts out kind of clunky and narrows down so much. Whereas, the radius starts out kind of narrow and ends up rather clunky. Okay, but do you see more or less two surfaces? One two. One, two. Well, these are articulating surfaces for some, some of the carpals. Specifically this one that I'm pointing out with my fingernail. This is where the lunate bone articulates, whereas this one that I'm pointing out at with my, pardon me, fingernail, this is where the scaphoid bone articulates. Scaphoid lunate. Scaphoid lunate. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I think we're ready to start looking at hands. And I have an articulated hand. Okay. And on a practicum or, or even a quiz, I would totally keep the hand articulated. Okay. But I had set up my carpals here. And then I totally botched them up. So let me see if I can put them back together. It's like Humpty Dumpty. are pretty mixed up. I mean, pretty, pretty, pretty mixed up. I wanted these to be in the same order. This would be here. That would be there. That would be there. This guy would be there. There, there. Nope, nope, nope. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, there we go. I feel better. Oh, so much better. Okay, I'm going to start with the carpals just so that I <laughs> don't have to keep those little tiny bones in that order much longer. All right, this is the anterior view. This is the posterior view. And believe it or not, even if these are, are bent in a way that's misleading, right, that's misleading, I can tell the difference. There are at least two really obvious ways to tell the difference. There's a projection right here. In fact, I can pick up the whole hand via that projection, this one. 
that isn't evident. There, there isn't a matching projection on the posterior view. It's only anterior. And there's a bone right here that disappears in the posterior view. So in the posterior view, we look like we have seven carpals, when really we have eight. This bone, kind of S-shaped, well actually in an anatomical position, it'd be like this. Um, this one, kind of S-shaped, same as this guy, S-shaped. This is just not articulated. See how that's kind of S-shaped? Ish. Scaphoid. Scaphoid bone. Okay. This guy, the immediate neighbor to the scaphoid. Here. Here it is by itself. Lunate. This guy, the immediate neighbor to the lunate. Here. Triquetrum. There's triquetrum. Okay. And this guy, the immediate neighbor to the triquetrum, the one that we can see in the anterior view, but we can't see in the posterior view. Here, there. That's more realistic. That's the pisiform, pisiform bone. Okay. Notice these one, two, three, four bones. None of them articulate with the metacarpals, okay? Whereas these bones, one, two, three, four, do articulate with the metacarpals. This guy here, trapezium. This guy here, trapezoid, sorry, sorry. This guy here, the one that had the, the projection, hamate. Oh, I just skipped one. Sorry. I skipped this guy. Capitate. Capitate. Trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. I was so excited about hamate because due to that projection, it looks kind of like a ham hock. <laughs> That's how I remember it. It looks kind of like a ham hock. Trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. Okay? I would never pull just one carpal and say, name the carpal. That's just horrible. I would always show you the articulated hand. Okay? Now, here's how most people remember their carpals. However, this, depending on your household and your parenting may or may not be appropriate for children. So I'm going to pause while you get yourself away from children. S is for scaphoid. L is for lunate. T is for triquetrum. P is for pisiform. T is for Trapezium, T is for trapezoid, C is for capitate, H is for hamate. Some lovers try positions that they can't handle. Some lovers try positions, enter that they can't handle. I started over here and then I had to go back over here for the next line, just like I'm typing. Some lovers try, triquetrum, positions, pisiform, that trapezium, they, trapezoid, can't capitate handle hamate. Okay, and while your children are not there, I'll also tell you that I remember the pisiform pisses me off. <laughs> I can't see it. Suddenly there are only seven carpals. 
right? Whereas in the anterior view, oh yeah, there's the eighth. There's the eighth, the little tiny guy. Little tiny guy, here he is all by himself. So cute, so cute. Okay. All right, so metacarpals. Metacarpals are kind of tricky because you must, you must use Roman numerals. There's actually a lot of anatomy that requires the use of Roman numerals. And the numerals, in this case, describe the entire digit. This is digit Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, Roman numeral three, Roman numeral four, Roman numeral five, okay? And so, this is metacarpal Roman numeral one. Or, I could word it this way, metacarpal of digit Roman numeral one. Metacarpal of digit Roman numeral two. Or I could say metacarpal Roman numeral two. Metacarpal Roman numeral three, metacarpal Roman numeral four, metacarpal Roman numeral five. All right? The rest of the bones in the hand are phalanges. Phalanges. And each is called a phalanx. Just like the singular for meninges was meninx, each of these is a phalanx. Okay? By the time you take practicum two, I can point at any phalanx, and you should be able to tell me, for instance, middle phalanx of digit Roman numeral five, or distal phalanx of Roman numeral four, or proximal phalanx of digit Roman numeral three. Proximal phalanx, middle phalanx, distal phalanx. Proximal, middle, distal. Proximal, middle, distal. Proximal, middle, distal. <gasps> Wait, look at the thumb. Oh no, there are only two phalanges in the thumb. Distal, proximal, no middle. No middle man. <laughs> okay, so if I point here, proximal phalanx of digit Roman numeral one. If I point here, distal phalanx of digit Roman numeral one. All right, I think the hardest part of the hand is the carpals. Carpals are tough. Okay, now let's start looking at hip bones. And by the way, the, the walkthrough for um, differentiating between male and female pelvis is a separate video. It just worked out that way. So right now we're just gonna do individual. Individual bones. Okay, here's a hip bone. Here's the other hip bone, okay? And hip bones, remember we had to tell left and right, all right? So first, I'm gonna walk you through the bone markings, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you with left and right. All right, let's see. What can I do right now? Um, what's the best way to work with that? I'll do this. Okay. This bridge here, that region, pubis, this part here, ischium, and then this part here, the fan, ilium. Ilium. Okay. See this huge depression? Acetabulum, acetabulum. How might other people say that? Ace, 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 tabulum? I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> I've always said acetabulum, okay, here. This ridge, iliac crest, iliac crest, here, sorry, I need to get my thumb in there, there we go. Here, that's where the pubic symphysis would rest, right against that surface right there. Okay. Whoops, sorry, that was loud. Oh, itchy, itchy. All right, more. This big, big notch right here, 
is thankfully called the greater sciatic notch. Okay. And this pokey poke, just inferior to the greater sciatic notch, this pokey poke, ischial spine, ischial spine. Okay. And then this huge passageway is the obturator foramen. Obturator foramen. Okay. And I can't see whether or not you can see me right now, but I'm going to assume you can. Here's how I remember. Hello, obturator. Can you give me number nine? Kind of, kind of looks like a phone. And that's the obturator for you, man. Hello. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, yeah, more. Let's just flip this guy over. So same bone. Okay. Again, there's our ischial spine. There's our greater sciatic notch. Okay. But this surface that we're now seeing, really rocky looking, that is not surprisingly the auricular surface. What does that articulate with? Where else did we see an auricular surface? Yeah, that articulates with the sacrum. A bit of goo. A bit of goo. And again, this is where the pubic symphysis articulates. Okay. Obturator foramen. And I can't see acetabulum. All right, this is actually the medial view. And this is the lateral view. Acetabulum can be seen in the lateral view. It cannot be seen in the medial view. Okay, which makes this the right hip bone. It would sit in your body like this, but it won't stand up like that on the table for me. And here, oops, is the left hip bone. It would sit in your body like this, but it won't do that on the table for me. All right, whoa. <laughs> there are the acetabula of those two hip bones and the obturator foramen. I mean, foramina in this case. Okay. Hip bone is so loud. Hello, obturator, can you give me number nine? Okay, now let's start looking at femurs. Femurs, okay? This is the distal end of the femur, okay? And in the anterior view, it's really smooth. Whereas in the posterior view, it's still smooth, but it's got like these two knobs almost. Isn't that crazy? See how smooth? You know why it's so smooth? Rock-a-bye horsey. Rocking horse. What kind of bone marking makes you think rocking horse? Condyle. Those are condyles. Absodoodle. I'll come back to them. Okay, whereas that's the proximal end. The proximal end of the femur. Okay. Here, probably pretty pretty obvious, if I wanted to strangle the femur to death, I would choke it here. That's the neck, okay? Whereas this is head, and that little boop, 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 boop. Fovea capitis, fovea capitis. Here, we're still in the anterior view, by the way. Okay. Here, lesser trochanter. Okay. Whereas this guy, which, wow, wraps all the way around this guy, that's the greater trochanter. All right. And in the posterior view, the two are connected by an intertrochanteric crest. Intertrochanteric crest. Here. Greater trochanter lesser trochanter, whereas the humerus had tubercles, not trochanters. Okay. Head down to the distal end. This side, one smooth surface. 
for the patella to rest on. Anterior, anterior, okay? And in fact, this smooth surface smooth surface is called the patellar surface. Okay. Here. Here. And here. Lateral epicondyle. Here. And here. Medial epicondyle versus, I'm going to flip them over. Notice that the heads have to be oriented toward the medial aspect of the body. Otherwise, your ball and sockets are very strangely arranged. Medial condyle. Epicondyle, condyle. Lateral condyle. Epicondyle, condyle. Medial condyle. Lateral condyle. Okay? And this depression between the two is thankfully called the inter condylar fossa, the intercondylar fossa, okay? I can only see the intercondylar fossa and the intertrochanteric crest in the posterior view. As soon as I turn these around, back into anatomical position, there's no intercondylar fossa, there's no intertrochanteric crest. Okay, that makes this the left femur and this the right femur because they're in anterior view right now. Okay, let's see. Uh, for your patella, I don't need you to know left and right, okay? But I do want you to notice that one, one surface is rather rough and the other is really smooth. Which one do you think is anterior versus which one do you think is posterior? Well, which one articulates? Yeah, the posterior of the patella articulates with the patellar surface. So they're both smooth. They're both smooth. Okay. Rough side is anterior, smooth side is posterior, and that's all I need you to know about patella, other than the knee joint, which is also fair game. Uh, let's do tibia. I happen to grab the right tibia. Here's the proximal end. There's the distal end. Okay. Anterior view versus posterior view, but I didn't ask you to be able to tell right from left. I'd be surprised if you weren't able to, but I didn't put it on the study guide. Okay. See that? Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. That's the medial malleolus. The medial malle malleolus. You've probably kicked it accidentally before. It hurts. Okay, but we also have a lateral malleolus. It just belongs to a different bone. What is this different bone? This is fibula. And lots of times students make up new words like tibula and fibia. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> okay, we have a lateral malleolus and a medial malleolus. Medial malleolus belongs to the tibia and the lateral belongs to the fibula. Okay. Now, the rocking horse legs of the femur, they rock right here. And so not surprisingly, this aligned with medial malleolus is the medial condyle of the tibia. And this is the, I'm sorry, I just mis misidentified that. Oh, no, I didn't. Medial condyle. This is the lateral condyle here of the tibia. And then this weird projection in between that to me looks kind of like a little crown. 
I think royalty is the intercondylar between condyles, intercondylar eminence. That's why I think of royalty. There's his royal eminence. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, I don't think I assigned any other bone markings for the tibia. Medial malleolus are two condyles in the intercondylar eminence. And then for the fibula, the only bone marking that I assigned was the lateral malleolus. Okay. I think, yeah, it's foot time. Okay. There's a foot. Same thing with the hand. I would never show you a foot that wasn't articulated on a, on a quiz or, or a practicum. Okay. Oh, I did not like that scratching sound. Okay, so there's an articulated foot. This is the right one, by the way. Let's start with the easy stuff. <laughs> Metatarsals, okay? And this time, this time, your big toe is digit Roman numeral one, and your pinky is digit Roman numeral five. Okay? Even though in anatomical position, your thumb is lateral and your big toe is medial, just think big digit. Big digit is going to be Roman numeral one. And tiniest digit is going to be Roman numeral five. Okay? So that means metatarsal Roman numeral one. Metatarsal Roman numeral two. Metatarsal Roman numeral three metatarsal Roman numeral four, or you can just as easily say uh, metatarsal of digit Roman numeral five, okay? Same thing as we saw in the thumb, just two phalanges for the toe, the big toe, okay? Whereas three phalanges for every other digit, okay? Proximal, middle, distal, proximal, middle, distal, proximal, middle, distal, proximal, middle, distal, proximal, distal. So if I point here, I say name the bone, you would tell me proximal phalanx of digit Roman numeral one. Or if I point here, distal phalanx of digit Roman numeral two. Or if I point here, you would say middle phalanx of digit Roman numeral three. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. If you understood that for the hand, then you totally understand it for the foot. The only thing you have to do is change metacarpal to metatarsal, okay? Now let's look at the carpals. I'm sorry, the tarsals. <laughs> okay. This big bone right here, calcaneus. Calcaneus. That's more or less the heel. Look, it's, it's large enough that I can hold the entire model via just that bone, okay? Whereas this guy that sits superior to the calcaneus, this guy, talus, here, one of my faves, navicular, navicular bone, okay, here, cuboid bone, cuboid bone, and then all three of these, all three of these, all three of these, cuneiform, unfortunately spelled C-U-N-E-I-F-O-R-M, evil. Medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, even though this was middle phalanx, and lateral cuneiform. Okay, there are six, no, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven tarsals, even though there are eight carpals. Calcaneus, talus, navicular, medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, lateral cuneiform, and cuboid. Cuboid, okay? This is the inferior view. This is the superior view. There's the lateral view. And there's medial view. Okay, I'm going to double check our study guide. <sighs> The knee joint, um, 
I went over it already, but I don't remember where it is. I think it, it might be in the, I could swear there's a walkthrough for it already. Well, anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to close this walkthrough off and go investigate. Yay.